Okay, I am back and we are going to be on page 226 of note 17 and we're talking about vectors in three dimensions. So vectors in three dimensions are incredibly important. Um, they kind of are the building blocks uh, of like all your thought processes and we even saw it right when we talked about the distance formula I mentioned like the easiest thing to do really is to make a vector from A to B find the norm of that vector That's the kind of thinking that we want to utilize here So one thing that's great is that basically everything that we learned in two dimensions is going to generalize to three dimensions So you're just going to add a third component. So I'm not going to belabor that I'm just going to tell you that that's true and let's look through these and make sure that you remember all of them. So the component form of the vector from A to B, so you're starting at A and ending at B. Remember you do B minus A, right? So it's gonna be X2 minus X1, Y2 minus Y1, Z2 minus Z1. I tend to think of those as delta X, delta Y, delta Z, but the order really matters. So like when you're doing slope in two dimensions, not as important because as long as you're consistent, it'll be fine. When you're talking about vectors, it really matters because you know, one goes this way and the other one goes that way. So got to get that. Magnitude, still also called the norm of the vector. So on your calculator, menu 7, 7, enter. Uh, it's the norm of a vector. It's the double absolute value symbols or whatever. I mean, it's the symbol for a norm. And it's just square root of a squared plus b squared plus c squared if you're in component form, which would be delta x squared, delta y squared, delta z squared. Um, the dot product same exact thing, except now it has a third component to it. So in two dimensions, we might have stopped. Well, we would have, might have, we would have stopped here. Well, we, no, in two dimensions, we would have stopped before we got there. Two dimensions, we would do this. In three dimensions, we add this. So that's exciting. Um, and we can still use magnitude, magnitude, cosine. So mag, mag, cosine. Um, is the dot product. And this is really important because theta is gonna be the angle between the vectors. In two dimensions, you could kind of get away with like plotting everything and working out things. Three dimensions, it's like impossible to even think about, right? Like you have, a point at, you have one vector in component form, so you're starting at the origin and you're gonna go to like three, five, eight. And then you have another vector starting at the origin, you're gonna end up at negative two, one, seven. I'm just making these up. Is the angle between those acute? Is it obtuse? Like who knows? So we really need to understand how the dot product relates to the angle between the vectors. Because often the only thing that really matters is are the vectors orthogonal, meaning that they form like a right angle? Are the vectors, is the angle acute? Or is the, the angle obtuse? That's what, so I literally just spelled out the three cases for you. Um, okay, so if you recall, I'm just going to write the answer and then I'm going to say why it's the answer. So if the dot product is positive, then the angle, I don't know why you have so much space here. The angle is acute. And you're probably thinking or you're yelling at the screen right now, the reason for that, hopefully. So keep yelling. I'm going to keep answering these and then I'll go back and I will explain why I think it's the case. Um, and then if negative theta is obtuse, and if the dot product is zero, that's the greatest thing because it means the vectors are orthogonal. Orthogonality is a really big deal. There's a lot of things that you do where it just turns out that something's orthogonal to something else, and that's why it works. Um, and a lot of that will come down to the dot product, right? So I'm not going to say, theta, well, theta is pi over 2. Um, and we would say the vectors, vex. I'm going to abbreviate that apparently, vex. Uh, orthogonal, which I'm definitely going to abbreviate orthog. All right, so why is this the case? I mean, you might already remember this, but if we go back to our um, dot product thingamajig up here, I can rearrange that, right? I, uh, I can do cosine of theta is u dot v. Well, I'm using v and w. I'm using u and v, whatever over the magnitude u, magnitude v. And then, okay, you probably can't even see that. My face is probably covering it. And then to find theta, I'm gonna have to do the inverse cosine and this is where it all comes together, right? So um, theta is the cosine inverse of u dot v 
over the magnitude u, magnitude, uh, oh, I almost did it, v, ugh, so many things. Okay, so why is it that we get the results that we get? So the magnitude of u and the magnitude of v are both positive. Uh, so how do I do that? I'm going to say the mag, ugh. struggle, here we go. The mags are greater than zero, which means the only thing that is determining the sign of the thing you're doing the inverse cosine of is the dot product. So you're going to do the inverse cosine of something. That thing could be positive. It could be negative. That is all based on the dot product. And if you remember inverse cosine, it's this part of the unit circle. So everything is positive here only sine and therefore cosecant are positive there, which means that if cosine, if, if, yeah, if cosine is positive, if the ratio, if you do the inverse cosine of a positive, you end up in, why am I struggling to say this? Inverse cosine is positive, you're gonna be in quadrant one, you're gonna get an acute angle. If the, I feel like I said that wrong. If you're doing the inverse cosine of a positive, you're going to be in quadrant one. If you're doing the inverse cosine of a negative, it's because the dot product was negative. And if you're doing the inverse cosine of a negative, you're guaranteed to be in quadrant two. That's why this is happening, right? The magnitudes are always positive. The only thing determining the sign is the dot product. So you already knew that from when we talked about it in two dimensions. So I thought I'd spend like eight minutes of your time maybe talking about it there. Um, in three dimensions, we need more unit vectors, right? I is the vector that's determining the x-axis. Let's use a more exciting color. There's not like a lot of options. I is actually the unit vector that determines the x-axis. Like determines it. You start at the origin and the x-axis is pointed in the direction of I. J is gonna determine the y-axis. And now, here's the big thing. If we are standing and we point in the direction of I, so if you remember this, you point in the direction of I, curl your fingers, they're gonna to curl toward J, and then they are going to determine the location of the Z axis, which is my thumb, thumbs up. Um, so since it's I and J, we then just call it K. Um, so this is gonna determine our Z axis. And these are called the standard unit basis vectors. Standard unit basis, B-A-S-I-S. -S. Could I write it down? Of course I could. Am I going to? Turns out I'm not. Um, standard unit basis vectors, they determine the rectangular coordinate system, which is amazing. They're like very important unit vectors. Everything's based on unit vectors. So you can add, subtract, multiply. You cannot multiply. What am I even saying? You can add, subtract, scalar multiply, dot product. Um, there's no such thing as dividing vectors. Ridiculous. Uh, this problem is a, a flashback, right? Find a pair of orthogonal vectors, one of which is parallel to 5, 8, 13. So I'm going to call that, uh, I'm going to call that U. And they sum up to 12, 10, 22. So I'm going to call that V. And so find a pair of orthogonal vectors. So I'm going to say my orthogonal vectors are a is going to be orthogonal to B. And then I want, I'm going to make A be parallel to U. And then I need A plus B to equal V. All right, if you remember, so a fun fact about working in three dimensions, which is kind of weird, is that almost everything still happens in a plane. It just doesn't necessarily happen in the XY plane. But if the equation of the plane is sort of like irrelevant, then your paper might as well be that plane and we can just draw everything there. So that's what I'm gonna do here. I'm gonna draw my vectors. So draw a vector here, draw a vector here. I'm gonna say that this is the vector V, this is the vector U. And then what I wanna do is I wanna find a, a vector A, and a vector B that makes this happen. So hopefully you remember this. What we do is we're gonna throw in 
a theta, we're gonna write the cosine of theta in two different ways. So cosine of theta is, so if I use the right triangle, so using the right triangle, the right triangle has A and B. Actually, I'm not gonna do that first. I'm gonna use the vectors that I'm given first, right? So cosine of theta using the vectors that I'm given is gonna be the dot product. So it's gonna be U dot V divided by the magnitudes, magnitude U, magnitude V. But then using the right triangle that has side lengths, magnitude of A, magnitude of B, magnitude of V, cosine of theta is the magnitude of A over the magnitude of V. Magnitude A, ooh, A, uh, over the magnitude of V. Not doing great on writing there. Um, okay, so that means I can find the magnitude of A. Because the only thing I don't know in this whole equation is the magnitude of A. I can calculate the magnitude of U, calculate the magnitude of V, find a dot product, find the magnitude of V. Um, so it's gonna be uh, U dot V over the magnitude of U. Whew, long way to go. Um, okay, and then I know that A and U are parallel, which means that the vector A over the magnitude of A will be equal to uh, u over the magnitude of u, which is just a unit vector, right? So that means that a is going to be the magnitude of a, which I just found. It's actually the directed magnitude. That's kind of something that we usually just gloss over. It's possible if the angle is obtuse, which is really hard to show on camera, um, then the dot product will be negative. So you get a negative for this. So think of it as the directed magnitude. It's kind of like a little bit better. It actually has another name. It's called the component of um, the vector V along vector U, but we don't actually need to know that. So we kind of don't know that yet. Um, and then this will be U over the magnitude of U. I'm gonna knock this out on the calculator in a second, which is why I'm like just writing a lot of like, formulas. And then to find B, so B, since A plus B is equal to V, I'm gonna say B is V minus A. All right, let's go to the calculator, plug in some things, and then uh, we'll wrap up these notes. So let's see, I'm going to share my calculator. All right, so we're in the Inspire, and the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna store the vectors U and V. So I'm gonna say U colon equals, and then uh, this guy, and then it's 5, 8, 13, V colon equals 12, 10, 22. And now let's see what we can do. So the magnitude of A is going to be, um, it's a fraction, it's a dot product. So that's menu um, seven, C, and then three, menu seven, C, three of U comma V, over the magnitude, which is menu seven, seven for norm of U. So that is, um, ugh, that's really gross. Uh, that's the answer that I'm getting there. And I'm gonna jot that down. It'll be there when I flip back to the notes. So uh, this value is gonna be 71 radical 258 over 43, unless there's a typo, who knows? Um, and then, so the vector A is going to be this answer times uh, the unit vector. So that's menu seven C enter of U, right? That's U divided by its own magnitude. So when I press enter, something interesting will happen. That radical probably gonna go away, better go away. So I get this, this is the vector A. So I'm gonna write that down. I mean, you're writing it down too, so it's not hopefully wasting your time. 355 over 43, comma, 568. I'm gonna be really disappointed if this is wrong. Um, if it is wrong, it's really just a typo though, because I'm pretty confident that everything I did was right. You get that, okay. And then the vector 
B is going to be V minus, ooh, let me store that actually. I'm going to do A colon equals this. Okay, so then B colon equals V minus A. Okay, so I think B, let me jot this down. And then I'm going to check. I'm going to do the, um, do the dot product and see if I get zero, right? Because they should be orthogonal. 161 over 43, negative 138 over 43, and 923. All of that's wrong. Not all that's wrong. Some of that's wrong. You can't even see that I'm writing it wrong, but I thought I should announce it to the world. Okay. Um, yeah, good. All right. Let's dot product these. Let's do dot product um, A and B. We get zero. Yes. All right. Um, so let me, I'm going to go back to sharing the iPad just so you can like see what I filled in. And then I will call it quits on this video and I will be back to do more math with you because I enjoy the way we're spending our afternoons together. So here we go. So I filled those in. So you should fill those in. I hope you are finding this helpful and I will see you soon.